Hey there, and welcome to Large Format Friday. I'm your host, Matt Mirage. If this is the first time you're stopping by the channel, there's a playlist of our entire third season of LFF. And if you haven't subscribed yet, each and every Friday, we're gonna be here and we're gonna be chatting about something large format photography. Now, even though I missed you guys last week on LFF, it has been one heck of a busy week. This past Sunday, we had our first episode of Large Format Live, which was a two hour live stream. So during Large Format Live, I was doing a little bit of live cyanotype printing, and I also announced a new feature to LFF, which is LFF Sustaining Memberships. This is a way of donating regularly to the show instead of repeating one-time donations. This is uh, kind of PayPal's own version of Patreon. I'm testing it out and seeing how it goes. So far though, the response from you guys has been crazy. Nearly 120 folks from 20 different countries across the world tuned in live as I was making these strudel prints. And anybody that became an LFF sustaining member on Sunday during and after the live stream was eligible to receive one of the rewards prints that I was making, which is these little strudel cyanotype prints. They're slightly larger than postcard size, and I'm gonna get working on those and getting those out to uh, my new LFF members. And if you wanna be an LFF sustaining member, go ahead and get subscribed and check the link in the description below to uh, mirage.com slash memberships where you can check that out. Anyway, so on to today's show. All of this positive response with the uh, DIY UV light box, the cyanotype episode, and the live stream have inspired me to further go on an alternative photographic process. This is something I'm super jazzed about because I love alt process. It's just such a deep rabbit hole to keep diving and diving down. And it's gonna pair perfectly with today's topic. A few months ago, I received an email from Gregory over at The Naked Photographer, and he pitched this really neat idea about doing a print exchange between several different uh, film YouTubers, and I love that idea. The only downside is I haven't been in a print exchange in a long time, like years, and the pandemic wasn't helping that situation. So the pressure was on, and then I looked at who all was participating in this thing, and I got even more nervous. Being the smallest channel in a print exchange of this many great photographers, some of which I've followed for years and years, is quite a nerve wracking thing. I wanna show these guys what we're about over here at Large Format Friday by making what I consider one of the ultimate large format contact prints. We're not doing a silver gelatin, we're not doing a cyanotype, we're doing platinum palladium. Let's go. So much like our cyanotype process, which we've been doing for the last few weeks, platinum palladium is an alternative photographic process. This means it's not using a silver halide in a gelatin emulsion like standard black and white darkroom papers for enlarging art. This is a UV contact printing process, meaning we need ultraviolet light to make our exposure, typically a lot of it. That's why we have our UV LED unit and we need to hand coat an emulsion. This hand coated emulsion uses some noble metals, namely, platinum and palladium, usually suspended in a sodium solution, and we're using a ferric oxalate as our sensitizer. When ferric oxalate and our platinum and palladium salts are combined together in very minute amounts and then spread across the surface of a watercolor paper, this is gonna give us an ultraviolet sensitive paper that we can then expose uh, for a controlled amount of time through our negatives smushed onto that paper and then developed out. The chemicals for this process are generally pretty nasty and not something that we wanna be eating or drinking around, so just keep that in mind. And we're gonna have our ventilation going in our darkroom. That's why I'm working in this space. If you don't hear a fan on during this episode, it's just so I can control the audio, but when you're doing it this at home, remember, have good ventilation. You don't wanna be just doing this in like a stale room or closet. Keep that air circulating. If you're particularly sensitive uh, to working with standard darkroom chemicals, I recommend getting like a large respirator. An N95 I don't think is gonna do enough for some of these particulate metal salts. So just be careful. And we're gonna be wearing gloves the entire time. So let's head in. So first thing we're gonna need for our platinum palladium process is our sensitizer, which is our ferric oxalate. This is available as premix from Bostic and Sullivan as part of one of their kits, or you can purchase it separately. It's also available in powder form, but guys, mixing it is very, very finicky. You need to use only distilled water and uh, you have to have it heated up at least 120 Fahrenheit. I found a little bit more closer to 150 and you have to stir vigorously. I actually prepared this stuff last night because it takes a while for it to kind of completely go into solution. Just by the premix, it will save you quite a big headache. We're also going to need our noble metals, our platinum and palladium. Oh, speaking of which, 
One of the cool things about Platinum Palladium is it's an incredibly archival process. Because Platinum and Palladium are noble metals, or metals that are pretty much non-reactive with everything out there, means they're not going to deteriorate over time. As soon as you deposit these metals into a uh, thick watercolor paper, that print is going to last as long as the surface of the paper. It's pretty incredible. So we're not talking like 20, 30, 50 years, even 100 years. We're talking hundreds of years. We know how long watercolor papers can last. That's how long platinum palladium prints can last. It's pretty amazing. But in doing so, the chemicals to do this process are not inexpensive. That's probably the biggest elephant in the room is how incredibly expensive platinum palladium is. It's a gorgeous process and not for the faint of heart. When you get it right, it's a print that just sings. There's a few different versions of this process. There's many different ways to wash these prints, uh, develop out these prints. If you're looking to get started, I can recommend no better than going with Bostic and Sullivan for the constituent chemicals and the ready to go kits. They're excellent. And Bostic and Sullivan is one of the only ones that is manufacturing powdered ferric oxalate to make the process a little bit easier to do. The reason the process is called platinum palladium is because we can use varying degrees of platinum or palladium. We can go solely palladium and make a really nice warm tone print, or we can go solely platinum and uh, watch our money evaporate in real time, or we can go a slight balance of the two. There's no right or wrong answers. It's all due to the photographer's taste and what they want out of a print. Generally, if you want to save some money, start with just palladium or something like a zyotype print process and add little bits of platinum as you desire a more uh, like a cooler tone with your print. There's another form of platinum printing which I took a specialty workshop for uh, back in 2015 with Mr. Scott Davis, and that is the sodium platinum print process. I'm going to put a link in the description below to some of Scott's work uh, and a link for his, uh, his workshops. He does a great job. He's based out of the DC area. Uh, just a fantastic photographer, huge large format and ultra large format enthusiast. So if you haven't checked out his work, go ahead and do so. So those are what we're gonna to need to make our emulsion, which we're gonna coat on the paper. And for hand coating paper, I showed, I teased a little brush last time, and that's what we're gonna to get to use today, my, my really nice little hockey brush. This is a, I think this is a synthetic sable, not like an actual sable hair, but it is super, super fine on these bristles. And it just gives you those lovely painterly brush strokes when you're moving it along the paper. You can kind of see the color cast uh, the brush has. That color cast is from soaking up some of the sensitizer over time. So that's our coating brush. We are also going to need some uh, washing and treatment chemicals. Our developer, this is a pretty cool thing because the developer lasts pretty much forever. This is potassium oxalate and you can see it's kind of cloudy and dirty and it's, yeah, uh, there's less of it in the bottle. I've actually used this potassium oxalate for the last six years or so on and off and it works great. Another interesting thing about platinum palladium, this process goes so, so, so deep. We're just covering the, we're skimming the surface of it today, guys. You can also modify the developer to change the feel and tone of your prints. You can change the contrast by adding small amounts of chemical restrainer, but then you have to remember and label which one's which. Or you can simply have the developer run cold, or you can heat it up. I like the look of it heated up because it gives me this warm, almost brownish tone to uh, more palladium leaning prints. And I'm gonna warm that up in my bath right here. I've got my Jobo uh, with the heater kind of turned all the way up, and that's gonna bring things up to temperature and make things nicey nice. Now, as far as washing out prints, one of the standard ways to wash the print out is with tetrasodium EDTA, or just EDTA as it's known. Uh, this stuff is a, a mild acid. A teaspoon of this will make a liter of washing liquid that can then go right down the drain once it clears. You have to do a series of slightly warmer water clearing baths. So after exposure and development for a few minutes, we're gonna need lots and lots of washes to get the print completely clear. To make platinum palladium work and have the right tone in our print, we're gonna to need to have a paper that's completely neutral, if not treated with a little bit of acid. We can do that by mixing a weak solution of this oxalic acid and soaking our papers in it. If I wanted to use my favorite stuff, the Fabriano Artistico paper, I would have to soak it in oxalic acid, but I wanted to make things as easy as possible. And if you are watching this and you like wanna get kind of like started quickly and get into some good results a little bit faster, I recommend 
using this stuff. This is Hanamule Platinum Rag. It is an amazing photographic paper. It is not inexpensive paper. This pack of 11 by 15 sheets was a little over 50 US dollars, but it is heavyweight. It's got a really neat surface with a little bit of a tooth to it, and it is completely neutral, and you can take it right out of the bag and start coating it right away. That's my favorite thing about using this. And as I mentioned on the live stream, uh, the person that's on the cover for this, this is from photographer Carrick Kuklis, an amazing photographer. Check him out at Carrick.com or over at the Ansel Adams Gallery. Amazing, amazing work. So I'm going to uh, use this stuff. I've been using this paper for the last several years, and this is my last pack of it. I'm a little sad, but uh, hopefully I will, uh, will do some justice with this print exchange and in this paper. So when we were doing our drawing for who got who in the print exchange, I'm sending my print to Mr. Azriel Knight, who is a fantastic uh, analog photographer. He's based out of Canada. I really have mad respect for his channel. Super consistent, great stuff. I, I really was like, I couldn't believe that he just like had that series of videos, a fortnight of film, just like going and going and going. And the content is great, really informative, really dives deep. And yeah, I just really hope, uh, hope you like this. Did I mention Everything we're doing now needs to be done in subdued lighting. We want to have only tungsten sources, nothing daylight or UV balanced. This process tends to be a little bit more UV sensitive than the cyanotypes I went with before. And come on, the stuff's way, way more expensive, like 20 times more. So we're going to be really careful and use exact measurements when possible. Got my flat bottom tray ready to start coating. I've got my distilled water in my little graduate here and my hockey brush. Just gonna soak that in there. We're not trying to completely wet it, but just keep it, keep it damp. So once I go to coat, I'm not gonna let it be drippy like this. I'm gonna take a paper towel and dab it off before I get going. So it's time to mix our sensitizer. Got my little shot glass here. I really love these little Pyrex shot glasses. You've seen them before on the channel. They're just great for mixing things up and swirling around chemicals and just pouring it on the paper evenly. There's a lot of different combinations that photographers like for their platinum palladium prints. I learned using the uh, an iteration of platinum palladium called the sodium platinum process. This substitutes uh, a couple of drops of sodium platinum instead of having a larger mixture of palladium and platinum salts. It ends up being a little bit less expensive, uh, but still kind of nerve wracking. So to mix up my sensitizer, generally you need equal parts of your ferric oxalate and equal parts of your combination of metal salts. The combination we use, whether it's uh, more palladium, more platinum, will change the tone of the print, but in the sodium platinum process, every one drop of this significantly uh, changes the contrast of the print. So no drops, it's gonna be a really smooth, warm print, and just a single drop or two in my sensitizer is gonna yield a much contrastier print. May not change the tone so much, but it will have a significant impact. And if you're using digital negatives, uh, what's recommended by Bostick and Sullivan is you use quite a few more drops of this since those digital negatives might not be as contrasty as something made in the, uh, in the black and white darkroom. So for an eight by 10 inch sheet of paper, I'm going to need 20 drops of ferric oxalate, 20 drops of the palladium solution and really one to two drops of the sodium platinum. I'm going to start with one and see what my test strip and print looks like. So with all of those together, we're going to give this a quick swirl. Make sure it's nice and mixed. There we go. All right, let's get out. This Hanamule Platinum Rag Paper is fantastic. It's super heavy stock with just enough texture on here to kind of, uh, to kind of help uh, see, uh, see the extra detail that lingers in the shadows. I'm going to get my, get my brush nice and prepared, brush off the excess water there, and I'm just gonna, I don't wanna pick up any of the fibers of the paper towel, just you just want to keep it damp so it doesn't absorb too much of the of the metal salt. All right, moment of truth. Let's coat. I could have done a better job at that. <laughs> All right, and we're gonna do our same motion we did before. Up. left. Okay. 
Here's our test sheet coated and we're gonna get that dried. One nice thing to do when you're marking out the area for your final print, just take a pencil, lightly indicate the area of the negative. This kind of gives you some, some guidelines. So my strudel negative there just giving me kind of the borders that I'm going to need to head outside of with my sensitizer for my next coat. Let's coat that second one. Now that our first coated sheet is nice and super dry, I'm gonna go ahead and tear it up into some very thin strips for my Stouffer wedge. I probably need about two or three strips like that. And then the remaining strips are gonna be used for the negative that we're gonna be printing with today. So we have our coated sheet, we have our little step wedge. I don't need to worry too much about that top part. It's gonna easily expose those first couple steps, but I really wanna make sure I have all those in-between steps and the lower ones accounted for. I've got my UV exposure unit here. If you wanna see how I made this, it was less than 100 bucks worth of components and it's been a pretty solid unit so far. So I'm gonna place my step wedge right in there. Great. Get my pane of glass, nice big thick heavy piece of glass. You can use this instead of a contact print frame, but contact print frames hold things a little bit nicer. And we're gonna start with five minutes of exposure. Ready, go. So our exposure is finished and you can see there's just like a little faint, almost ghost image. And I can read numbers all the way up to 15, 16. This bodes pretty well for our test exposure. And let's go ahead and add the potassium oxalate. So off camera, I was running into a couple of issues back and forth. For some reason, my print times weren't where I thought they should be. And then I looked underneath the UV unit and lo and behold, uh, a couple of rows of those bulbs had come loose a little bit. So I plugged them back in and hey, look at that. Our exposure times are where I thought they were gonna be. We're between five and six minutes on exposure and we can only do those tiny test strips for so long. We need to jump to the, uh, the main event. So I'm gonna grab one of my slightly larger strips and today's negative that we're printing. Hopefully I'll have a chance to print more than one. I'm gonna do the same one that I did in the cyanotype episode, the trickle at Middle Falls. This is one I took down in the Hocking Hills several years back, right around the time I started doing Platinum Palladium and I just really love it. It's one that's gonna showcase uh, that shadow retaining capability of the Platinum Palladium process. And uh, let's go with this one and see if we can do a full print as well. So our longer test strip just came out and we have just like a whisper of an image. I can kind of see this, the shape of the branch sweeping here and a little bit of the, so this is the area that's exposed without the film and there's just the edge of the film. And the developer's already in there. Let's just tip this in very quickly and get our develop print. And even though that development occurs incredibly, incredibly fast, we still want to process for about two minutes in the developer. With our longer test strip in the rinse, we're gonna pour our developer back into its bottle and get ready for the main event. We're gonna do our first full print. So before we run through our first full print, let's get our clearing baths in order. After the development step, we want to rinse our prints in running water for four to five minutes. You want it to be a little bit warmer than, than usual, so over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I find that really works. After that warm water wash for four to five minutes, we're gonna do a one to 2% series of baths of tetrasodium EDTA. So to mix up that one to 2% solution, like a big heaping teaspoon to about tablespoon size, put that into a liter of warm water mix it up nicely and put it in your tray. Got our coated sheets. Let's get that in there. Let's get our negative. Line that up on our pencil marks, like so. 
press it down, see how it looks. This is one where we want it to be nice, you know, relatively nice. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. No such thing as perfection when it comes to this. Oh yeah, all right. So we're pressed and start the timer for five minutes. There is our exposed whisper of a print. Let's add some developer to it. Even though this is the same negative I was having contrast issues with in cyanotype, I love, love, love the long tonal scale that you're able to achieve with platinum palladium. The areas of shadow just keep building on each other. So stuff that would be near impossible to print without significant dodging and burning, all these shadows right in here are just very, very delicate. Now, platinum palladium prints definitely need a lot of light when you're looking at them. So they may appear a bit darker be because this is a very matte finished paper and a very, very deep shadowed process. So you're gonna wanna hit these prints with a lot more light when you're showing them in your home or behind, you know, behind a frame. Just keep that in mind. Time to start washing. So I'm gonna drip all the remaining developer off of the print and then filter that back into my bottle. And then this is the primary wash. We're gonna go five minutes in this warmer water and we should see the, ye the bath considerably yellow from here because we're picking up all that excess sensitizer that wasn't used during exposure, which this is a lower key image. So a lot of that's already used, but it's gonna clear up some of my brightest highlight areas like here, here, and right over here. I just love how delicate the details are. And this is our Tetrasodium EDTA, our first bath. The print is already clearing pretty nicely and uh, you know, I want to point out the difference in tone between uh, the finished first print and this longer test strip. This longer test strip has a much browner tone to it because the potassium oxalate developer I was using uh, was significantly hotter than when I poured it in. I forgot that I don't like it too hot because I do, I don't know, I kind of like it a little more neutral to have this read dark. Anyway, we're gonna need five minutes in this first bath and then jump it to this second bath for five minutes and then keep bathing and bathing and then rinsing. This is why you want a heavier watercolor stock so it can handle those continuous rinses. If you use a very delicate or thin paper, you have to really wash, uh, you have to really check those wash times and those temperatures. Otherwise, the sizing, the thing that holds this paper together can fall apart and then you'll have bits sloughing off and nobody wants that. All right, here is our second exposure, just a faint little ghost of an image. You can see the overexposed areas are just very, very faint, and then the highlights, we, we can barely even see them, but that's all gonna change once we hit it with the developer. Okay, I couldn't leave well enough alone. I had to make another print. I was just so jazzed with this. I only wasted three sheets of paper today. Uh, one for the series of Stouffer wedges and test strips and two for the finished uh, prints. And I was like, ah, you know what? Let's coat two more. I went ahead and made two of my, uh, another favorite image from the Hocking Hills area. This is one I call the warm up shot. It's down at the Cedar Falls. I'm hooked now. I've got the alt process bug. You're gonna keep seeing alt process prints, maybe not all platinum palladium, but more throughout the channel. So guys, this is a two part series. I'm sending my print to Azrael Knight and in a few weeks, I'm gonna get my print from Greg, the naked photographer, and we're gonna have another installment of this print exchange to see what we got. I'm kind of excited. Every photographer in this print exchange is super talented and has their own unique spin. So I anticipate everybody here being really happy with the prints they receive. If you have any questions about the platinum palladium printing process, it's definitely not one that I would say is my forte. It's one that I've dabbled in just because of the significant cost. I could never really get like a consistent stream going, but hopefully that changes with the addition of my UV LED light source. It's really inspired me to get back into alternative process. I wanna give a special thanks today to our LFF sustaining members. A lot of you came through right after the live stream and I'm so, so thankful that you decided to support the channel with that, uh, that monthly subscription. If you see your name rolling along here, it's because you're subscribed to the $5 level or above. I'm gonna drop a link below uh, to check out the LFF memberships. Again, it's this, I'm still gonna do all the free stuff that I normally do, but if you're a sustaining member, you're gonna see your name pull up uh, in these end 
credits here. And occasionally some blooper reels and uh, footage of all those strudel prints I have been making. Oh my goodness, I, oh, so many strudel prints, so little time. Guys, I promise I'm going to get those strudel prints out as soon as I make enough of them. I'm still not even done. I'm about halfway through all the cyanotype prints I need to make for our new LFF members. So. Thank you so much. Thanks again for stopping by. Asriel, let me know what you think of the prints and we'll catch you next week for more LFF.